What's some of the worst cases of helicopter parenting you've ever witnessed? I know a person whose dad is a helicopter pilot and flew her to prom. Kinda relevant? This is what helicopter parenting should be. So I was a cart attendant at Target for about 3 years. During that time the original one that trained me left, and the guy that started after me got fired, leaving me. They never hired another. I told them several times that they needed to let me train people on the cart loader because once I got out of college I was gone. Well graduation came, found a better job, and I let them know. They begged to give them more time to find a replacement so I could train them. No dice. I leave. They finally find a replacement. I visit just to say hi to old co-workers and see a girl pushing the loader. There's also people in regular clothes pushing a buttload of carts. I went in and told my old manager because that's not really something they encourage. He goes not again come to find out this girl's parents literally had been coming to her shifts to help her out because pushing carts was too hard. I work at a university mailroom, and at the start of the semester, freshman students need to come to us to open up a mailbox. But one father came in and tried to sign his daughter up for her mailbox, and we had to turn him away and tell him that his daughter had to be the one to open the mailbox herself. So he came back with his daughter later that day, and we gave her the sign-up sheet. Then we watched as he filled everything out for her. He had her permit in his wallet. She didn't know her own email address or her school id number, but daddy did. When we were going over the rules and regulations with her, she was staring off into space, and her dad pocketed the key to her mailbox as they left. About 4 weeks later, we saw that girl again. She was closing her mailbox because she was dropping out of college because it was a lot harder than she thought it would be. She didn't know her mailbox number, still didn't know her school id number, and didn't know her home address. She had to call her dad and ask him for all of that information. My brother told a girl he couldn't date her because my mommy said so. He was 18 years old. So many horror stories. Tell us some please. Little League Baseball. I want to say first and second graders. Kid gets up to bat and the mother is standing about 6 feet away. The kid gets a hit and the mom begins to race with him from home to first, encouraging him to run the whole way. I had to ask someone in the crowd if the kid was developmentally challenged or something. Nope. Just a mom being way too over eager to see her kid succeed. Not me, but my friend when she was maybe 13 went to the cinema with a friend to find the friend's mum sitting in the front row, and sat there the whole time constantly turning around to check on them. Okay, so during a group chat last Halloween, me and some friends were talking about what horror movie to watch. Me and another friend of mine were debating over Ouija 2 and Alien when another buddy of mine chimed in out of the blue. Keep in mind this was at around midnight, so we asked for his opinion yet he didn't know what we were talking about. He had absolutely no frame of reference for anything we mentioned and was constantly trying to change the topic. As it turns out my friend's mother had taken his phone and pretended to be him to try to squeeze out any info on us. Which is just really creepy and we somewhat ended up avoiding him a bit later. This mother also has a tracker in his phone and is generally a religious nut. Alien, obviously. Much better film. When I was little, the mother of a kid in my 4th grade class volunteered at the school. She would literally sit in class with him all day, and assist him with his assignments. He wasn't special needs, just a normal kid like the rest of us. Anytime someone tried to befriend him, his mother always chaperoned the introduction, since this was back in the 90s. Anything involving parents was seriously off-putting. I remember inviting him to kick ball, but his mother didn't want him getting hurt. We felt bad for him. Parents still try to do this these days, but it's up to the class teacher how much they tolerate. Some will strictly say no parents after 9am, others will let them stick around all day. Sometimes the ones who get kicked out will just sit outside the classroom peering through the window. The saying cut the freaking cord already exists for a reason. I always read these threads and think to myself okay, I think I might be doing okay with my kids. My aunt picked out my cousin's clothes well into his teen years. He would wake up late for school and sit on his bed until she physically dressed him. When my kid was in preschool, a lady and her son came to check out the school one day. She was really cool, and her son played well with all the kids. He started full time the next week. On his very first day, 
He went down the slide too fast and landed on his knees on the mulch. He wasn't hurt at all. Just got right back up to play. The next day, his mom came in to raise heck. She said someone should have held his hand as he went down the slide. And couldn't believe there wasn't an incident report filled out. They never came back. Those moms are the reason my son's school calls about every little thing. I am not sure if this counts, but one time when I was in kindergarten, I hugged one of my friends as kids tend to do. As it turns out, his mom didn't like the fact that I hugged my friend. I am not sure if it had to do with the fact that we are both guys. To avoid any sort of confrontation from my friend's mom, my mom had to tell me that it's not okay to hug everyone. It's horribly sad how even the smallest boys are discouraged from expression affection and love for one another. And people wonder why men are bad with feelings. Well maybe if you let him get some dang hugs once in a while he'd be more empathetic. I have an aunt and uncle where whenever they fly somewhere for a family vacation, they fly with the family separated in half. Each half takes a different plane. So if one crashes, half the family will have survived. I told him the whole you're more likely to die when you're all driving to the airport together thing but he's not interested. In his defense he was actually in a commercial airplane that emergency landed in a farmer's field at one time. But if you all go together, then no one will have to miss anyone else. They came to her job interview. A girl in my old secondary school, aged 15, had a bracelet that would beep loudly whenever she wasn't in a location she was expected to be in. Once, due to a glitch, in a maths lesson, the bracelet went insane beeping and flashing. Long story short, she left the room, she rung her parents, and they called off the cavalry. This sounds like slavery or house arrest. This is my favorite story cause it makes me laugh every time my husband tells it but his mom used to make him poop with the doors open. She is crazy and I don't have time to tell all of her antics. But anyway so he was always just used to not being able to close the bathroom door. When he was like 8 years old he was invited to a friend's house for the first time and had to poop. So naturally he went to the bathroom and started letting it blow with the door wide open for an audience, which attracted several members of the family to just stare at him until the kid's mother came shut the door. He could hear the family laughing. Then when he was done and came out of the bathroom the kid's mother told him IDK what happens at your house but over here we shut the door when we're using the toilet. She also made him keep the door open when showering too although IDK when he realized that was also wrong. I was in Ryan college, I sat the 10 30 12 desk shift and like clockwork every night this dude's mom would call and demand that we send Anra to her son's room and make him call her. Please tell me you were allowed to say no. My brother's friend had no idea about Hitler or the Holocaust until she was a senior in high school. Her parents forbade anyone to teach her about it because it was too upsetting. I was at college orientation and one parent came up to my friend and said, that girl over there is my daughter. You go up to her and introduce yourself to her and be her friend. Should have said oh cool I've been looking for someone to get high with. In a C++ class a girl had to turn in a project that was due in the beginning of the class. One day she didn't bring her project at the beginning of the class but waited until our 30 minute break. Her assignment wouldn't print so her father came in class during the 30 minute break and helped her print it out to turn it in. We had a class printer. Her dad would sit outside of every class in the waiting area for 5 hours. He would help her during the break between classes. My mum wanted to go through my reddit inbox. Hi you Z star is mom. I'm his gay lover Eduardo. Viva la revolution. Some friends of mine wouldn't let their kid take the school bus. He was in kindergarten so I didn't think too much of it. For the first day of grade 1 they said he could take the bus. But they would drive to the school to make sure he got off the bus and into school okay. Kudos to the kid. He told them he didn't want them to do that and they backed off. My duogta's first day of kindergarten I had two moms send me pics of her getting off the bus. It never occurred to me to go to school and take a pic of my kid getting off the bus. I used to practice and study a martial art. I eventually became an assistant and helped lead the class. No, not at all a ninja. Just a guy who knew the drills and could be a punching bag for the master most times. Doing the kids class was always super fun and super exhausting. There were some spazzy kids, but overall it was great. 
I would leave the kids class extra exhausted. Those little shavers can go go go. So this one kid was perfectly normal. Not a behavioral problem at all. Very polite and always a good student. Usually he came with his friends and that kid's family but I was also there at times when his mom brought him. Ho. Oh, Lee. Crap. Typically the parents would sit along the back wall, or in this waiting room we had. I don't really even recall any others causing a problem, but this one lady was bonkers. She wouldn't stop whisper shouting things to him. It wasn't all criticisms. Some of it was praise. But she just like, couldn't let him experience things on his own. He was never in the moment when she was around. It got to the point that she was getting up and coming out onto the floor, disregarding our traditions about how to enter and leave the space and how to interact with senior members of the academy. She'd sit next to him to give him prodding and encouragement, and when she started half acid demonstrating the moves for him we tried to get her to sign up too. I mean, she was on the mat with him doing the moves. It was a very family friendly place that had parent and kid classes and everything. She declined to fully participate, but she kept showing up and it eventually had a negative effect on other parents and students in their classes. When the instructor had saved enough money to renovate the school, one of the improvements he added was an enclosed and completely separate waiting room for parents. So they could chat it up, get their attention off the kid, and there was a big screen TV on the wall for when they wanted to check on the kiddo. Some of the slower rank assistants who had dealt with her informally dubbed it, Maggie's room. Names changed to protect the obstinate. Surely not the most evil or egregious case of helicopter parenting but hey, she caused construction to happen. She moved her daughter up a grade, which caused the poor little girl to be ostracized by the class of older kids for behaving immaturely. When she found out a bunch of 8 year olds unlikely to respond well to a 7 year old with a superiority complex, mama made it worse by deciding she would force the kids to like her daughter. She threatened to sue the school for not addressing her daughter being bullied. The school didn't take the threat seriously because no you can't sue somebody because nobody will play with your kid. As far as I know the mom never sued but she still whines. Even two years later. Technically you can sue for anything. You just can't win. I work as a son in one of the labs at my school. I had to come in on the Saturday just after classes start. As in classes have been in session for two days. For something, dude shows up and is pounding on the glass door. So, I go down and ask him what he wanted, not opening the door, as the building is closed. He is wanting to talk to someone about how his son is doing in his classes. I point out it's 3pm on a Saturday and there are no professors in the building. I ask him if he has permission from his student, as he has to have written permission or proof of the kid being a dependent on the taxes. He says he's covered. So, I tell him to come back Monday with his paperwork, as he doesn't have anything on him, or no one will be able to talk to him, legally. So, Monday comes around and I'm jetting out of classes, and, I see dude walking out a lecture hall, followed by two of the campus police. Dude just decided he was going to sit in on his kids classes. Prof told him to leave and he refused. Come to find out, dude was helicopter parenting a kid who was a step kid. Five years ago, mom divorced dude partially for helicopter parenting and remarried. No permission. No tax dependent. Legally gives permission. Not even legally related anymore. Helicopter parent got a restraining order slapped on him. You have been visited by the snake of great corn. You will be blessed with corn for eternities to come. But only if you comment corn me up. Snake if you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video, or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.